The big story continues to be Trump's trade war. On Thursday, he slapped a 10% tariff on aluminum and 25% tariff on steel. It could spark a trade war, especially after Trump's trade advisor said there will be no exceptions made for allies. Mr. President, please. We can't lose any more allies. At this point, it's Israel, the UK, and whatever country your wives are from. <laughs> it's, wi it's wives Sylvania, I think. <laughs> and now the EU has threatened to retaliate with tariffs on Harley Davidson motorcycles, bourbon, and blue jeans. Wow, that is a real blow to America's midlife crisis industry. <laughs> All that's left is electric guitars and 25-year-old yoga teachers named Dawn. <laughs> She's an old soul. <laughs> but a very young body. <laughs> but Trump's not afraid of no trade war, mister. He tweeted on Friday, When a country, USA, <laughs> is losing many billions of dollars on trade with virtually every country it does business with, trade wars are good and easy to win. Yeah, wars are easy to win. The war starts, you get your dad to get you five draft deferments, the war ends. So easy. <laughs> now, all I, I just... I, I like... Now, all this trade war talk has gotten certain people worried, like Speaker of the House and Dracula's nice cousin, Paul Ryan. <laughs> Very nice. Very ni nice guy. Yeah, help, help you move, help you move, you know, something like that, pick you up from the airport. Um, he thinks Trump needs a more nuanced approach. There is clearly abuse occurring. Clearly, there is overcapacity, dumping, and transshipping of steel and aluminum by some countries, particularly China. Um, but I think the smarter way to go is to make it more surgical. The proper approach is a more surgical approach. More surgical. We just want to make sure that it's done in a prudent way that's more surgical. They can't make it more surgical. You took away everyone's health care. <laughs> it's not covered. I mean, they can do it. It's just not covered anymore. Now, it turns out surgical is not the adjective Trump would use. We're going to straighten it out. And we'll do it in a, in a very loving way. It'll be a loving, loving way. You know what they say, if you love something, set it free. And if it doesn't come back to you, it's because there was a 25% tariff at the border. <laughs> What's a loving tariff? I don't understand what a loving tariff is. That's the sort of thing you say if you don't know what a tariff is. <laughs> or what love is. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, in Panama, the Trump Organization has been locked in a legal battle with the majority owner of the Panama Trump Hotel and Tower. And yesterday, the majority owner of the hotel declared victory in his fight to oust the American president's family business. The majority won and Trump lost. Panama is a beautiful, bizarro America where Hillary is president, Tide Pods are for laundry, and Get Out won Best Picture. Back in... or Lady Bird. Back in 2016, the hotel's developers sold a majority of the property to a new owner named Mr. Finticlis. <laughs> Finticlis, also the sex move from that Shape of Water guy. <laughs> the Finticlis. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I don't know. I hear it's very good. I hear it's very good. The fabulous Mr. Finticlis quickly determined that Trump was mismanaging the hotel, saying profits had plummeted and the property's condition had left it virtually empty. It's got Trump's name on it, and it's worthless and vacant. So like Don Jr. <laughs> now, now... <laughs> a lot of Don Jr.'s friends came here tonight, I see. <laughs> Welcome. Now, the Trump Organization insists the hotel is thriving, but they have declined to disclose the hotel's occupancy rates. But they swear it's full. Just ask the head bellhop, Sean. <laughs> so, Trump's... He's a good guy. So, Trump's brand is bad for business, and his name is all over this hotel. Just at the bar alone, there's the Trump Mojito, the Trump Chardonnay, the Tropical Trump, and the Trump Breeze. Come on, how do you not have a Pina Coluda? <laughs> so... It's oh, all delicious. I could go that. I could go that. A virgin, a virgin pina coluda. 
So the majority owners voted to remove the Trump organization as managers of the hotel. But when Finticlis <laughs> showed up to try to fire Trump staffers, Trump employees refused to leave, and witnesses say the Trump organization had posted guards at the building's control room to bar anyone from entering. Did Trump just launch a coup on his own hotel? <laughs> How do you advertise that on TripAdvisor? Pet-friendly, complimentary breakfast, currently under violent regime change, <laughs> free Wi-Fi. Well, well, four stars. Four stars. Well, yesterday, a Panamanian court weighed in, ruling that the Trump organization had to go. So, Mr. Finticlis... <laughs> got to experience one of the most satisfying things I've ever seen. Trump's name being removed from the building with a crowbar. Oh, yeah. There's the T. Take it off. Now do the R. Now take the R off. That's it. Yeah, don't rush. Oh, yeah, make this last. Oh, that's good. Now do the U. Yeah. Do the U. Yeah, use the crowbar. Yeah, just use your hands. Yeah. Just get in there. Come on, yank it. You can do it. Twist it. Now twist it a little bit. Yeah, now yank it. And then just, just get it. Just get it. Just... Oh! <laughs> I am spent. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. Oprah is here. Yeah! That Oprah!